Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the What We Said podcast. We have a very special, gorgeous, beautiful, creative genius in the studio with us today. We have the one and only Ty French. What's up, you guys? <gasps> Valley Girls. I missed you. Valley I'm happy Girls to be back. Assemble. The Rat King is in the building. The Rat King's here. Tyrants and Valley Girls should be a circle. Unfortunately, it is currently a Venn diagram. <laughs> the Valley Girls side is bigger and I just need to say something before we start. I've gotten a lot better at podcasting, I swear. <laughs> so if you gave what used to be the Thai French podcast, is now Thai Rants, a chance at the start because you believed in me and you believe that the Valley Girls, you know, wouldn't steer you wrong. And maybe I got a little boring. Maybe I, <laughs> I needed to learn my way. I've learned the way. So listen to the, le- the last few episodes of Thai Rants because... I really feel like I'm popping my puss IA. I feel like I've really found my niche and you like it. You've it- been slaying. I, anyone who listens to, listening back to the first episodes of your podcast, if you started, <laughs> is just, not yours specifically, no, anyone's. Mine specifically, <laughs> particularly and objectively terrible. <laughs> Nails on chalkboard. I'm telling you, it's just it's just a universal thing. You listen back and you're like, how did anyone keep listening? It, it's crazy how you realize it's somewhat of a skill to, to talk. A hundred percent. Or how you improve over time. Yeah. And I like to think I do. From the beginning. But then I still listen to these ones and I'm like, yeah. Shut up. <laughs> so, but your podcast has been slaying. I've been listening. I'm, at, I'm one behind, I think, but I've been listening to every episode. They come out so much. Oh my gosh. And trust me, I'm working hard <laughs> for you ladies and gentlemen and non binary community. I love it. Thank I you, love it so you. much. Thank you for being here. Of course. Chels is on maternity leave, as you guys know. She's doing great. We love you, um, Chels. Love you, Chels. And I got the next best thing. Okay, I am. <laughs> I finally learned the, if you're watching on YouTube, thanks. And I finally learned thanks. the Gen Z heart. It took me a while and it took a lot of practice. We got to talk about how we went from this gorgeous, mm-hmm. cute, ah, heart to this making me look like a, a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And this is a skill. It is. It actually took me a second too. And then I to learn how to just do the one. Yeah. No, but I, I learned that and then I did it and people were like, yeah, you just let's just say don't do that. And I was like, oh. Oh, wait. I feel like everyone does that. But now is that chuggy? <laughs> no, it's not chuggy. I think it's like a gang symbol or something. Uh, cool. We're like, <laughs> oh my so gosh. Anyway, it's so bad. I've been I, trying to teach my friends. Don't worry. But now I'm like, is that just chuggy? Do we just got to stick with the millennial way? Because now the, we're just trying hard. I think the word chuggy is chuggy at this oh, point. Oh, <laughs> I can't keep up with you Gen Z rats. So anyway, um, I have tea. I Ooh. have I have piping hot tea that I have been. <sighs> simmering? I have been, it has been simmering. It's been the boiling is, over. The kettle's boiling. I have been wanting to FaceTime you and talk about it. And I have specifically waited oh my gosh. for this moment. <laughs> I'm going to save my disclaimers for no, the end. because did you listen to Tyrants? A recent episode on Tyrants, I talk about disclaimers. I'm sick of them. Yeah. We don't owe you disclaimers. <laughs> if you don't like it, get with the program. Understand context of conversations. Okay? Thank Facts. You. No, I'm. we're going to talk more about that. Okay. Remind me, because we need to talk more yeah. about that. But I will be giving disclaimers. Like <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, great. Um, no, okay. So I have a previous owner update. Oh, my. And... It has transferred now from previous owner to neighbor. This is what we're dealing with now, okay? Um, And it's going to transfer from nice to <laughs> legal action. <laughs> you are not going to be well. You're, you're really not going to be well. So the last thing I updated, I'm not going to like go through the whole timeline of events, but the last thing I had updated on the podcast and just like the last thing that had happened was that I had seen them drive by when I was with Chelsea yeah. and then... I had talked to my contractor and he was like, oh, they actually had come by. Yeah. Asked what changes we were making. Then the neighbors who were friends with that couple. Right. They were good friends. Right. Because they like had lived there for a long time. Then the neighbors had come by and said like, oh, what changes are you making? Could we come in um, and take a look and see what- How about I come inside your house? (laughs) Can I take a look at your home? I know. And see what changes you're making because our neighbors, our previous neighbors worked really hard on the house. They basically used the same verbiage as the owners had used, using them as a vessel, if you will. The, the owners, you know? I'd like to back up JC's claims that there was no special work done on this house. I've mm-hmm. seen it. Mm-hmm. I saw the before. There was no special work. No craftsmanship. No history. I have No been, family 
tradition, nothing. Heinous. I have been gaslit into going back to the original listing photos to make sure I'm not actually going insane. Heinous. Um, anyway, so by the way, I had never said that our contractor, when they asked, said, no, you can't come in. Like I would have to get permission from the homeowner for right. that. I don't think I ever specified. So people were like, did your contractor let them <laughs> right. in? No, he did not let them into the house. So that's, that's good. And we love him. Anyway, so that's the last thing that had happened. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, crazy. So Leif has the number of our neighbors and he has been in communication. Like anytime they've had anything to say or just like even in the past, um, whatever. Any type of communication has been done through Leif. Like I don't even have the That's neighbor's how it number. Be, the man. Yeah, exactly. And also because I'm like, I'm pregnant and I'm yeah. not dealing with this. Yeah, I don't like, want any drama. Yeah, I'm not. I'm protecting my peace. So Leif has been in communication with them, like not a ton, but yeah, just I was gonna for say, a little, hopefully it's minimal. It is very minimal, but um, they had asked for our number like really early on because we were doing work on the house. We were going to be out of town anyway. So that's how they have each other's numbers. And um, have we gone over the plant situation? Yeah, like on like the podcast? That, that they, I think so. Because the neighbors like asked if you were going to get rid of plants that they wanted some, right? Yeah. So basically the front yard, there are plants in the front yard that we're not going to use because we're going to completely right. re-landscape the whole front yard. And they, the, those same neighbors who had asked about the the house and everything had said, if you're going to just get rid of those and like throw them away, would we be able to rehome that? Like, would we be able to take some of them? Sure, please. Yeah. And we're like, sure, we don't care because we're, we're not using them. And so if you want them by all means. So we had said that was totally fine. Okay. Let's, let's start with that. <laughs> I'm scared. So I don't know the timeline of all this, but let's say like a week after the whole thing happened where they asked to come in, mm -hmm. Leif and I are at the house. It's uh, like, it's getting dark. It's like sunset and it's getting dark and there's no lights on in the yeah. house because it's there's no electrical yeah. done. So we have like our phone flashlights out because it was it had just been getting dark and we're looking at something in the house, but we're about to leave. And I hear people walking like by in the front yard and then I hear someone being like, oh, I think there's someone in there like with a flashlight. I hear a woman say that. And we walk out and it's different neighbors that I've never met. It's, it's okay. like, they're not, they're down the street or something. Yeah. And it's like an older couple again, like same, they're all like in the same age group. Okay. What and, are all these old people doing in this neighborhood? And then she says like, oh, are you guys the owners? And we're like, yeah, we're walking out of the house. And she's like, hi, like we're your neighbors. We live like down the street. Um, oh gosh, I almost said one of her name. <laughs> I almost name dropped. Um, she's like, your neighbor the one who we know, who we've been in communication with, mentioned that you're not going to use these plants and like pavers. This isn't a yard sale. So, oh, 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 the foreshadowing. Mm. Um, so she's like, we were wondering if we could take any, if you're not going to use them. Spring is obviously the perfect time to reset, maybe upgrade some aspect of your life. And if you were looking to get some new kitchenware, cookware, bakeware, Caraway is the perfect place to do that. If you guys watch my vlogs and if you ever see footage of me cooking with a pan, whatever, if I'm making eggs or something, I am using my Caraway pots and pans. They are so beautiful. They are just very pretty to look at. I have the cream set. They have a lot of really, really great colors. I also have their whole bakeware set. So like muffin tins and cookie sheets and stuff like that. And it's so nice that it all just matches and is cohesive and is great quality and is also non-toxic, most importantly. Caraway's internet famous kitchenware is a staple for any home and comes in various modern shades to fit with any design aesthetic. Ditch the chemicals with Caraway. Caraway Homes' non-toxic kitchenware features a chemical-free ceramic coating so food can be prepared with peace of mind that no hard-to-pronounce chemicals are going to be leaching into your healthy ingredients. They also have an amazing little organizational system that comes with the pots and pans. So I don't know if you guys, if you have like drawers that you put your pots in or under your cabinet and the, the lids to all of them are just like kind of everywhere. It's hard to organize. Well, Caraway has like a little organization system. So I have this little thing that holds and organizes all the lids to my pots and just like hangs on the side. It's kind of hard to explain, but so that my cabinets and my drawers that everything is in look so much more cohesive and it's just way more organized. So just as a reminder, their iconic cookware set comes with the saute pan, fry pan, Dutch oven, and saucepan, 
plus lids for all of them, a canvas lid holder and magnetic pan rack for storage. It is the ultimate kitchen setup and will save you $150 versus buying the items individually. Plus, if you visit carawayhome.com slash what we said, you can take an additional 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive for our listeners. So visit carawayhome.com slash what we said or use code what we said at checkout. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. Okay, I'm so put on the spot. And again, it's kind of one of those situations where it's just like, Okay, yeah, because literally they're either going to go right, in but the also trash. Like, wait until I, you know, put up a sign that says, I know. come take these plants. Leave me alone. <laughs> I know. So we're like so put on the spot. Yeah. They're really nice. Right. And they're just on a walk, by the way. They didn't like come over to do that, but they're like on a walk and then they're like, oh, someone's here. And so anyway, we're like, yeah, sure. This weekend, if you guys, oh, we're, no. we're, we're trying to put it into like a, Time frame, not like, oh, come by any time. Right. We're like, if you want to dig up any of the plants this weekend, that's fine. And they're like, what about the pavers? Like, are you going to use any? Like, they're asking for like anything in the yard. And we're like, sure. Like, this weekend, if you want to like take anything, you can in the front yard. They're like, how about your garage door? How <laughs> yeah. about the windows? Yeah. So that was kind of it. We talked a little bit more and they were nice. They were nice enough. And then they left. Okay. So. Let's fast forward to the weekend. It's Sunday and I'm at like on a little coffee shop date with Caitlin. You know, Caitlin, yeah. our friend. Yeah. And she's like, I can't believe I haven't seen your house yet. And I'm like, we need to, I was like, I, let me take you by. Like <laughs> we're so, we're so close to it. Let's just go. So she's like, yeah, I'd love to stop by and see the progress. So we pull up. I'm terrified. <laughs> Lawn chairs no. on my um, driveway. People I, I don't recognize. My, How one, many people? Six. So, or maybe five at the beginning. Four or five, and then it turned into like six, at, or even maybe seven at the end. Okay. If there was so, a barbecue, I'm literally <laughs> suing. No, no, no. I'm suing. <laughs> two like camping chairs, lawn chairs with two older women. When I pull up, I literally think it's the previous owners, first of all. And I'm like, in 911 emergency. Shock. I pull up and I'm like, what is happening? It's just me and Caitlin. And I'm like, whoa, 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 what is going on? One of them I recognize. It's the one who has been in communication with Leif. So there's two chairs. Two of them are sitting. Someone's standing, like just talking to them. And then there's two people digging up the yard. Now we'll revisit. Those two people were the people I had given permission. Like right. those, that was the couple that I had seen where I was like, sure, if you want right. to take some stuff, take some stuff. This weekend only. I didn't say throw a neighborhood party at my house. Yeah. Okay. So six boomers sitting <laughs> on the on my driveway. I'm like, I cannot make this up. Yeah. I cannot believe. Like, what are they doing? So we pull up, we walk up to the house, and I'm like, hi. And she has the audacity to say, Hi, did you find out about this from Facebook? Oh my. <laughs> What are you talking about? She's said, selling the plants. I was completely speechless because I've met her before multiple times. Did you find out from this? I'm the owner of this house, mama. <laughs> oh. Who are you? I'm the owner of this house. Literally. So I, I'm i actually stunned speechless because I'm like, what do you mean? We've met multiple times. And yeah, first off, you disrespect me and don't yeah. remember me. Yeah. I'm gorgeous and I'm pregnant and I'm a redhead. How many people do you meet like this? Second of all, <laughs> this is my home. And you're sitting on my driveway. Facebook. Also, I don't go on Facebook, ma'am. Don't no. disrespect me again. So so I go, I said, I'm the owner. I'm the owner of, I literally did say that. I said, I'm the owner of this house. And she, it turns like, she's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't recognize you. She's like, I thought you were a teenager. I want to punch <laughs> this bitch across the face. A teenager? I'm pregnant. I know. Once again, <laughs> don't disrespect me. I had a sweat set on, so I'm like, and I literally said that. I was like, oh, a pregnant teenager, because can you can see at this point that I have a belly, but again, I had a sweat set on, and so did Caitlin. It was like a, you know, a weekend vibe, so I'm like, okay, maybe we're in these like big sweat sets. She thinks we look young, whatever, but- um. Thank you for that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, actually. <laughs> the, the skin is glowing. Yeah. Um, and the the neighbor next to her, I can't explain the condescending nature of just like, 
did you find out about this from Facebook? And I'm like, this is my house that you're sitting on my property. You are property. better than me. You are better than you're me. I wouldn't have even got out of the car. 911 would have showed up with the cops. <laughs> so, the police. So um, she's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't recognize you. Da, da, da. And she goes, did Leif not tell you I was doing this? And I go, no. And she's like, oh gosh, like, sorry. Like, you're probably wondering what's going on. And so immediately I'm like, okay, uh, Leif. Told Leif. Me. Well, well, on one hand, I'm like, maybe they had talked and he said like, sure. but I'm like, I can't imagine him approving her. Basically- And just never bringing it up. She she proceeds to be like, did Leif not tell you I'm doing this? Oh, from 10 to one today. I, I put your address on Facebook and I just said like, these plants can be taken, the pavers. She goes, I just couldn't in good conscience let this all go to waste. You posted my address publicly mm-hmm. on the internet mm-hmm. and told strangers to come dig up my yard. Mm-hmm. Federal so, investigation. So I am completely in shock. I am actually completely in shock. There's new neighbors coming by. Hi, like I'm a neighbor. And I'm just like, I actually am shaking. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. And I think she could sense that my energy was very like, so very violating. off. Like yeah. I was, I was super, first of all, I was offended that she didn't even know who I was. And I'm like, you're literally on my, yeah. you're sitting on my driveway. And the lounging around. I know. And I just feel like the power dynamic because of the age thing is is such a thing. I was telling my parents. Saying I thought you were a teenager is yeah. so disrespectful. Like yeah. jokes aside, like I just told you I'm the owner of this house. Yeah. Even if you thought I was a teenager, don't tell me that. Mm-hmm. Like get off my property, bitch. I know. And I, I was telling my parents, I'm like, I feel like if this was your house, like they wouldn't be acting like this. Right. It's like, because they think we're just young and they they think like, we're wasteful or I don't know what they think, but right. it's like they have this narrative about us that we're young and to be I don't care if you're the neighbor. I, I couldn't in good conscience no. let these plant goes, okay, go for, to freaking a homeless shelter or something. Like go feed the hungry, like do something else. Like you're worried about the plants in your neighbor's yard. Like I know. just because you've lived here for X amount of years doesn't mean you have any sort of ownership over this house. No, this not is at my all. house. Not at all. So, but th- this all being said, I'm like, I'm so shook and I'm kind of trying to be like, uh, yeah, what? And But also she just told me that Leif knew. So I'm like, okay, obviously there's been a miscommunication and I need to speak to Leif yeah, because what's he's happening? Gonna get slapped when he gets home. Yeah, I'm like, this is shocking. So we go inside and Caitlin's like, oh my gosh. She's like, that was the most condescending thing I've ever. And I'm like, I'm, I'm so, so glad, glad you were, were there yeah, to witness. Like, 100%. And anyway, so we come back out of the house. There's more people like digging up. Just like strangers. Yeah, strangers. And I'm just like, I'm actually going to go insane. So she had also said, she's like, oh, I can do this next weekend again. Like um, if they don't all get uh, taken, can I just do this again next weekend? And I said, no. Like that was the only boundary I was brave enough to put in place when there's six people who are 60 years old. The audacity that she asked when she could tell that you were uncomfortable. I know. So she's like, um, so could I do this again next weekend? I said, no, I think after today, this is, that's enough. And I yeah, think now again- Yeah, I don't care. They're going in the trash. Yeah, and I think she again sensed like, okay. So she was like, okay, I understand, whatever. And again, nice. They're nice enough. But then- Okay, but so, you can't hide weird behaviors behind nice. No, 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 I know. It's it's like an ex- excuse to be right. inappropriate. Yeah, to like cross a boundary. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, they were nice, but it's yeah. like- no, she knew damn well she was crossing mm-hmm, a boundary. Mm-hmm. And she asked to cross it again after she could tell that you were uncomfortable. I don't care if you asked politely no. or not. So so then I get home and I'm like, <laughs> husband. Yeah, I'm like, Leif, did you know that she like put her address on Facebook and is having a, essentially a sale? A she, didn't, sale. she wasn't selling them for money, that but she was been giving them At least away. A buck. Yeah, she was giving them away. But I said, did you know she was going to do that? And he's like, what? He's like, no. Oh, so now you're he a liar. Said, yeah, he said she had asked if like um, a, a few of the neighbors or he, he had said something about um, the neighbors and we thought like she was referring to the people who we yeah. just met, whatever, and her could like take some of the plants this weekend. And he said, yeah, that's fine. Like he's like, and she said nothing about putting it on Facebook. And he was like, maybe it's like a neighborhood Facebook group. And I'm, and I'm like, I don't care. And he's like, no, I agree. Like she shouldn't be doing that. But no. anyway, so basically- we had sent her a message and I think it has been well received, like, or like received at this yeah, point. Yeah. Cause we were very firm right. and very like, we would appreciate if this ends now. And like literally leave yeah, me alone. Yeah. And we were like very, we were like, we're very busy with a remodel with pregnancy and 
like this is this is done. Like you're literally ruining like what should be one of the happiest yeah. like things ever. I've worked my entire life to get this house and mm-hmm. remodeling it. I'm pregnant. I'm gonna bring my baby into this house, and everything about this has already been so stressful. And you are adding to that. Yeah, leave me alone. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> so so that's the latest and greatest. I just can't um, imagine. I don't even like talking to like people that I know. Yeah. Let alone, I cannot imagine going over to someone who just moved into my house who is. 40 years younger than me and being all up in their business and like asking for things. No. Like I get like being nice and like, I do like like a neighborhood aspect. Right. And like getting to Community. know your neighbors. Like we live in a time where like people are so scared to like, you know, go up to strangers and like knock on doors and whatever. So like, I like that they like came and introduced themselves mm-hmm. and whatever. That is where it ends. I know. I will let you know if I need sugar for a batch of cookies. Other than that, <laughs> GTFO. You're not having my plants and leave me alone. That's like, it's giving me the energy of like when someone like, like, who knows? When you have the kid, are you going to come knock on my door and ask to, like, hold it? I know. Bye. See you later. I know. And we had both agreed, Leif and I were like, <clears throat> clearly we've set a precedent so far that we're just like, chill. Like, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And I'm like, this ends yeah, now. Like, yeah. we're not continuing. Boundary. Yeah. To just be like, yep, come by any time and dig up our front yard. Like, yes, does it? And that's what we were saying is like, it's hard because- does it really matter that you're going to take the plants? Like to us, not really. Like if we break it down, we don't care. Like we don't (laughs) want them. It ain't about the plants. I know, but it's, it's deeper than that. It's like, it's the fact that you have entitlement to our property and that we're not like clearly we're being too chill. Even though I think it's so bizarre that they're all just like so entitled to this. And, and they all tell me when, when they come over, they're like, we knew blank, like the owner's name. Guess what? I don't give a rat. I know. And I'm like, respectfully, that has nothing to do with yeah. us. We are the new owners. And <laughs> our friend was like, you should literally be like, who's that? Next literally. time they say that. Cause it's like, what does that have to do with us? Yeah. Like that's nice, but we don't care because yeah. we're the new owners and we don't have a connection to them. Yeah. And just because you do them, the previous owners doesn't mean that all of a sudden I'm going to be nice and like you can cross my boundaries. Well, and, yeah. And now that we're going to have the same exact dynamic as a 65 year old couple yeah. who you're because they're like our kids grew up together i'm like that's great that's beautiful it's a new chapter i this feel like it's done. like you said it's like they they can tell you guys are like a young new couple you're pregnant like you seem nice and they like think that they can take advantage of you mm-hmm. like sorry if i moved in there i don't think they would add, they would that would not have gotten this far yeah and she she did apologize which was good okay, and i feel like good. i actually do feel like the message was received like i feel but she apologized like via text like afterwards mm-hmm. but i'm like but when you saw I was uncomfortable in person, you still asked me if you could do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, they're why her I, asking- Why do you push people's boundaries so hard until then when they snap and now you took advantage of my kindness and now I have no desire to be nice to you mm-hmm. and now things are going to be weird and awkward moving in and now you apologize? It's like, don't push me to that limit. I don't want to be like the rude new neighbor on the block who's yeah. like young and came and bulldozed your best friend's house. Exactly. Don't make me be that person. But guess what? I will be that person. Exactly. I'm like, you've pushed me to a point. Like I am very- nice and chill and I'm not going to make a a scene at all. Like neither Leif and I are that those types of people, but you have literally pushed us to where it's like, we have no choice but to say something because I don't know. And and we keep thinking, we're like, Oh, once this happens, they'll stop. Like once this happens. And it's just like, it's been a long time at this point of things happening and happening. You're done. Like you're done. And so anyway, I am really hoping and I'm feeling like that is the last time I'm going to have an update because I, if it's not, FBI. Yeah, no, I know. Because I was saying like, I feel like I'm almost not like inviting toxic energy into my life, but it's like, I feel like by just making yeah. such a scene and being like, oh my gosh, every time it's just like piling on. And I'm like, we had the conversation. Yeah. I feel like the message was received. Yeah. I feel like it's done at this no, point. No, I get that. I get that. You can't like beat a dead horse. Yeah. It's like, you, fi- you figured it out. And, you settled it. And even when hopefully. people, whenever I post about these updates, people are like, this is going to be, my, this was going to be my disclaimer. It's like, I, I don't want to keep yeah, talking about it. I was like, I actually don't even know. I didn't even know if I was going to share this story. Cause I'm yeah. like, people are just going to be like, you're an idiot. Yeah. Like <laughs> literally, no, I don't think you that. are so stupid. Like tell that. them to stop. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like, I feel like we have in, Many different ways, but it's like it, we were forced to be very firm and yeah. be like, this is not appropriate. This is, stops right now. And I, again, I do feel like it was hopefully. <laughs> um, if it's not received, yeah. I'll be making sure she receives it with a <laughs> bill of sale of her house and a right fist to the freaking chip. 
<laughs> Bye. Yeah. Isn't that wild? I'm like, wow, I actually could not have imagined this continuing to go in this direction. And what I will say is it's not just all old people that live in that neighborhood. Right. It's just that they were all That's like- That's why I'm shocked. Like these are people from like all- different streets and, and yeah. whatever that they just all knew each other because their kids like yeah, grew up. Yeah, this isn't like a cul-de-sac. No, but like we met our we met some of our other neighbors and they're like a young couple that seemed like super cool. Yeah. And we we had said, we're like, sorry for the noise of the renovation. They're like, oh, we don't care. Like we renovated our house. They're just really cool and chill. And so it's like, we have some You're great neighbors. With yeah. the owners of that specific home. With the owners of that specific house, like- Leif's like, apparently them moving from that house is like the craziest thing to happen to that neighborhood in 50 years. Like that's how it's being treated is like, we knew I them can't. like, and I'm like, cool. Like It's like Tessa selling her house then me like literally just pestering the new owners and be like, oh, like do you mind? Like, I really like this tree. Like yeah. can I come like get it? And then me like blasting their address. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. I love Tessa. I love her house. I have just as many memories in there right. as she does probably. Like, But it's it's not, you don't feel entitled to out, it. See you later. I know. And I'm telling you, it's that like just uh, boomer. I don't know what else to call it other than just the mindset of like, we can't let this go to waste. I'm like, like get a grip. You probably like, bought that house 40 years ago for $150,000 and you just sold it for God knows what. Yeah. And see you later. I That's know. your entitlement. You I just know. walked away with a fat check. I know. See ya. And not that this matters at all. Like you don't cross boundaries regardless, but Leif's like, I'm sure they think that we just have like family money or like our right, parents bought right. the house for us and whatever. And we don't yeah. know what we're doing. And which is not true, but you know what I mean? Like yeah, they yeah. just think that we're like these young kids so who are maybe entitled or spoiled. Yeah. And it's like, again, hey, little talk about entitled and spoiled. Look in the mirror, yeah, grandma. I know. <laughs> I know. Anyway, that was my tea for you that I was like, I have to save this for the podcast. Well, now that we talked about it, I want some of those plants. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going after this. Maybe you can oh dig up what's yeah, left. I'll dig up a cactus. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Gorgeous. Well, thank you for the tea, gosh. Yeah, so that's the that's Sorry to ever all the Valley Girls eardrums, but <laughs> I get very heated when people come after my girls. I know. It's actually out of this world. So, so we'll see if there's anything else. I really don't think there will be, um, but- If there is, if, if there will, they if will there, be meeting me very yeah, quickly. I was going to say, if there is, I actually don't think I will be talking about on the podcast because it will be- <laughs> Move to legal. It will literally be something like more serious probably oh at that gosh. point. Because it's just out of control. But Crazy. anyway, um, let's talk about you. I wanted to- Great, my favorite topic. <laughs> um, when this comes out, Coachella will have happened, <sighs> but it's right before right now. So this is my favorite game to play. It's like, what is your expectation and what are the vibes? And then we can compare it to You guys are getting BC Thai French mm -hmm. before Coachella Thai French. Mm -hmm. And then when this airs, it will be AD, after the death of Thai French. <laughs> because I'm going to be feral. Um, I'm camping at Coachella. If you guys don't listen to Tyrants, you guys are losers. But also, you mm -hmm. wouldn't have known that I camp at Coachella because I'm just like- so different than everyone else. And, you know, I'm different than other influencers. You're very, like, I organic. Camp. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, like, super real. And I just, mm -hmm. like, like to, you know, be like normal people, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, no, it's really because I'm broke. And <laughs> I don't want to spend the 45-minute shuttle ride to Palm Springs because I'll be partying all day. And I did that two years ago. And I almost passed away in the shuttle line. But, yeah, I'm excited. I'm, you know, busy week and all my fits ready. Mm -hmm. The weather, we got to talk about weather. When I checked two days ago. It said it was going to be 100 degrees oh on gosh. Saturday. My gosh. Sunny, Palm Springs, California. Very, very hot. Now, this is an issue because I was planning on wearing, well, okay, this is going to come out after, so I can say this. I was going to wear a wig on Saturday. I, I, I saw your thing where you wore all black with the gloves and you're like, never again. Never again. I, you I'm got to learn. I'm one-upping and I'm wearing a wig. What kind of wig? <sighs> Basically, I wanted to go bleach my hair like I did last year. But then I was like, my hair's looking so gorgeous mm -hmm, lately. And it's so mm -hmm. curly and long. And I was like, I'm going to need hair plugs soon. Let's be honest. I'm a white guy <laughs> going into my 30s. Like the forehead okay, line we, is receding. I'm going to stop you there. We got to stop with the going into the 30s because I've been They're hearing right. you talk about You're that right. a lot on the podcast. You're like, I'm 30. I'm 30. I'm like, <laughs> whoa, let's like slow the roll. I know. I'm only 27, but I'm I'm like, it's a, it's a self-help situation trying to like ease myself in, you know, so uh -huh. that when it comes, it's not like I'm in denial. Okay, okay. Um, and the forehead is- Nothing it's, wrong with aging, by the way. I'm almost unless 30. Unless you're a white man, almost 30, <laughs> and your hairline is thinning, and it's going back, 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 back again. And so I know I'm going to have to go to Turkey in probably about six to eight months. And this is probably going to be my last time in my life where I can really, you know, go for it and have long hair. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to bleach it. I'm going to just keep growing it until I okay. go to Turkey, and then I'm going to have to shave it and get the plugs. 
You but have me dead. One of my outfits, he had platinum hair because it's like, you know, modern and vibey. And so I just got like a blonde wig that is kind of like the length of my hair. Well, I cut it to be the length of my hair. Thank you, Sally's beauty. Um, so it will you like- You got the wig from Sally's as well? No, no, no. I just like literally got shears and a wig cap and literally ta -ta -ta and like basically gave it my haircut. It's a little okay. longer. Is it straight or curly? It's straight, but I'll like wear it slicked back. Okay. So that was why when it said 100 degrees, I said, never mind. I'm going to have to scratch that look. I'm going to have to make it work something else. Then I checked yesterday- 72 degrees and raining. Interesting. Which also is a problem for a wig. Mm -hmm. So Maybe I don't know. I'm kind of playing it by ear. You know, I'm bringing the wig. I'm also going to bring some other stuff. I'm going to have to see when I get there. I don't know. The weather, get your shit together. Meteorologists, you guys suck. I have been selfishly online shopping, thinking about what I want for maybe a push present, aka, you know, something that I get for pushing this baby out. Now, that's a tradition I can get on board with, um, but something I've been kind of looking online for like a really nice leather tote bag, a mom bag, if you will, like some sort of bigger bag that will fit a lot of stuff, but that's like chic and leather. And let me tell you, Quince has one that I've actually been eyeing. It is way more affordable than a lot of the brands that I've been seeing, and it looks very similar. And I know that Quince's quality is amazing. I actually think I'm going to be purchasing... Maybe not, maybe not the push present, but I might just give myself a little present and purchase this bag that I'm going to share with you guys using our code literally today because it's back in stock. Um, it is called the Italian Leather Handwoven Tote from Quince. They also have a smaller version of it, but it's really beautiful. It looks very high end, but it's a way more affordable price. They have it in like black, this dark brown, really pre pretty leather, um, an olive color taupe, and they're all honestly all really, really cute. I don't even know which color I want. But Quince is here to transform the way you shop with a range of high quality items priced within reach. So they have like 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters for $50, organic cotton sweaters, washable silk tops. I have a little black silk mini skirt from Quince that is such great quality and I've worn it many times. They also have timeless 14 karat gold jewelry. And the best part is that all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. By partnering directly with Top Factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us, which is really amazing. So, indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash what we said for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That is Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash what we said to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash what we said. The weather has been all over the place just in general. I never know what I'm getting. Never know what I'm getting. I never know what I'm getting when I wake up in the morning. We woke up. Uh, eclipse. <clears throat> Yeah. Rainstorm. New York had an earthquake the other day. Thing after thing. Sign of the times. Speaking of, that song came out seven years ago. Harry Styles. Love what you. a great song. Remember when we went to the Harry Styles concert together? Oh my gosh, Way? yes. Yeah, I forgot about that. A gorgeous night. He's so sexy. Oh, he's everything. That's when I realized that you can feel the, the spirit at a concert <laughs> as well. Yeah, that That's is when I reaffirmed my homosexuality. <laughs> I renewed my subscription. Uh, have you heard of that? Like it's a, it's a phenomenon. I actually don't know if this is the right term and if, if it's not, sorry, but I think it's called like collective effervescence. Have you heard of that? I think I've heard you talk about it on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically like the feeling of connection when you're with a group of people, if you're at like a concert or yeah. something like that, when someone's singing and you feel like emotional a little bit, like yeah. you're like almost brought to tears by yeah. like how beautiful it is. And when you grow up religious, you kind of associate that with like, oh, I'm feeling the spirit or like right. I'm feeling God. That's why which, there's so many songs. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. That's how they get you. How um, great thou art. I don't remember the tune. Don't sue me. Um, But then you realize you can also feel that at Harry Styles and you're like, uh -huh, oh, okay. Uh -huh. Or so, at Coachella in the Sahara tent listening to EDM. Exactly. So, it's honestly a beautiful thing. You've been to Coachella. Thing. Yeah, only once Did you feel though. that at Coachella? Because mm -hmm. I feel like that's like the most I've ever felt that. It's like everyone... Coming together, dressing up to the nines, like planning it so much and just like running in the fields, music at every stage. There's every single kind of music. The sun is setting. The weather's perfect. There's great food. You're with your friends. It's so fun. So I hope I it feel that so this fun. weekend. But I might die also. I have only been once and it was just me and Chelsea. Like yeah. we met up with did Kristen. Did we ever bump into each other or no? I don't think so. I don't think we did. Because it's so hard when you have no service. Like you were with a different group of people and it was so fun. But like I... Um, I don't even want to say but because it really was just like so fun just Chelsea and I I feel like if you went with a group too though it could yeah. be even 
more fun, like just with more people and- No, it is it is all about your crew. That's why this year I feel like people are like, oh, the lineup kind of sucks. I'm like, I don't go for the lineup. Mm-hmm. I go for the vibes. Yeah, the vibes, hang. the vibes. And it really is so fun to just dress up and I don't know. That kind of leads us into talking about the social media mm-hmm. of it all. I mm-hmm. feel like, because a lot of people will be like, Coachella has just turned into like influencer Olympics, da 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 But also- I feel like that's almost a, what's the word? Not like selfish, but it's like, that's only if you're chronically online. I that feel- is a projection yeah. that people that have never been to Coachella project onto Coachella for some reason. I don't know what it is, but- It's not like that when you're there. It is not like that at all. No. I need you guys to comprehend, if you've never been to Coachella, how large it is. I think literally, I might be getting the number wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's like 300,000 people go to this festival. And like the grounds are big, but like not that big. Like the largest stadium ever played by a female last year, I'm pretty sure was Beyonce and it was 80,000 people. And it was a giant stadium. Yeah. So- There's so many people 300,000 people like in, basically it's like a, a horse equestrian field and like a golf course. And you think all 300,000 of those are influencers and taking photos? No, that is Even not the case. Even if a ton there of a people- small portion of that. And- Everyone goes and you take pics. It's so scenic. But I am an influencer. I've been an influencer forever. That is the one weekend I feel like I'm not an influencer. Like just I feel like, like living life. So many people like go to Coachella just to go to Co- Co- Coachella. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people also get confused by like now there are so many influencer events. And a lot of the influencers that you think go to Coachella just to be an influencer don't actually even go to Coachella. They go to Coachella events, events. or other festivals yeah. like Revolve Festival and there's like a Celsius Festival. There's Neon Carnival. There's all these other like parties that influencers will go to Palm Springs for the weekend mm-hmm. and go to all the Coachella events, but they're not actually even going to the festival. Or if they go, they go like just for the headliner, like late at night. So when you're there during the day, like it is very chill, mm-hmm. honestly. And the stages are pretty spread out. So even if you see influencers, it's like, there's 300,000 people there. You're not running into them. They're not like taking up the whole space and, you know, taking where it's like so, uh, like where everyone wants to take the photos. It's not like it's just like influencer central. You really don't feel that vibe well, at all. I feel like a lot of people are taking photos, but they're not even necessarily influencers. No, it's that's just what everyone. I'm saying. Yeah. It's just everyone. Like, yeah, but if you're you trying document. to get a photo, you're not like, oh, all the influencers are in the way. Like, you just don't think that. You yeah. don't see influencers vibe. when you're there. And if you do, you're looking for a bad time. Like, mm-hmm. you are searching that out and you've got something that you need to work through against influencers. <laughs> But I've been seeing a lot of discourse about, I don't even know if I want to get into all this. About the influencers? uh Uh-huh. Just about like how people hate influencers these days, like more and more. Grow up. (laughs) Grow up. Hot take. Like you and I say this with a lot of love and I'm dead ass serious. What is the issue? Like, are you, I'm not saying you're jealous. Are you jealous? I'm genuinely asking. Are you bitter? Are you lonely? Are you like, what is the issue? Why does someone who beat the system and brought, works hard, some some influence, influencers as a blanket term, like all influencers are not the same. There's no. mommy bloggers, there's TikTokers, there's Instagrammers, there's photographers, there's like so YouTubers, uh, whatever. There's so many different forms. So saying like influencers, it's like, Okay, why are you comparing me to a Mormon mommy blogger? Or why are you comparing me to a 16-year-old TikToker or to a beauty influencer or whatever? Like, we are so different. There's so many different levels to it. But every influencer I've ever met is so hardworking. Like, and I'm not saying it's hard work, but like they put a lot of time into it. They work a basically probably equals up to a nine to five. Like they put hours into their job. And so I'm not like looking at I'm not even gonna say a specific job because then I'm gonna get canceled. But like, I'm not looking at other people killing it at their job, putting a lot of time in and like getting rewards for that, which I might think your job makes way more money than I think it should. Like Mm -hmm. uh, for what you give out Mm -hmm. and the amount of effort that you put in. I'm not judging you. I'm like, get your bag, sis. Work capitalism. I know. So why are you so pressed that someone sent me like a PR package that's probably like a $20 sweatshirt and that I got to go on like a trip to Bora Bora? Why are you so upset? Why does that bother you? Why does that affect you? There are a lot of reasons why I feel like people dislike influencers and why the hate for it grows. And and I asked for some people's hot takes about social media on uh, Instagram. And I was, a lot of people were kind of saying like, I just hate influencers now. And like, they've become so out of touch and blah, blah, blah. And, but like, why is out of touch? I know, I, I hate know. that because it's like, that out of touch means like you're out of touch of reality. 
this is someone's reality. 100%. But some people were saying like, th this is my two cents on at least the money part of it all. Because a lot of people were like, influencers should not be making like, more money than like doctors and lawyers and things like that. Here's Most what of I them will do say. Not. A lot of them do. A very small percentage. There are way more doctors in the world than there are influencers that are making more than doctors. I don't know what the average salary of like a doctor is, honestly. Like a lot. I guess we'd have to look up like specifics for different states. But here, here's my take is like influencers do not get paid because they're such hard workers and they're the most amazing people and they deserve more money than these people who are on the front line, who are doing all this really important work. They don't get paid because of that. They get paid as a return of investment from, from a brand, right. point blank period. That also, is why they're getting paid the money they're getting paid, just as like context, because it's like, be like they don't deserve that, they don't deserve that. But, that's what but no influencer is saying they do. No one's saying like that they are better than any other career or that they do deserve more than a doctor or whatever. So it's like, why are you projecting that onto me? If, if a brand is willing to pay this for me and I'm like, That's sometimes even I'm shocked. Sometimes I'm like, wow, like you're paying me this rate to do this thing. Like, wow, that is amazing. Why are you mad at me for getting my bag? Like, why do you want, why are you like almost wanting everyone to be in the system where it's like, literally you work a nine to five, you work your entire life, you have shit health insurance, you have shit uh, like pay time off and all these things and you're getting, uh, shit salary, like, why do you want everyone to be stuck in that? Like, if we have built an industry that, like, got us out of that, like, that's great. Yeah, no, I mean... Because it shows other industries that, like, yeah, you are underpaying your people. Like, brands do have a budget. If a company, if you're working for a company and say you're on, like, the retail side and you see them p pay an influencer to post a TikTok and it's, like, $20,000 and that's, like, half your salary, that should light a fire in your ass to be, like, we need to storm together and make the companies pay their employees more right. because now we know they have the money. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, you're mad at the wrong person. You shouldn't be mad at me getting my bag. You should be mad at the system in which is rewarding this behavior. Right. I, I think that just in general, which is a very, this is like a very delicate thing on social media, but I think that like an influencer complaining, that just terrified me. I thought we weren't recording. We oh, are, no. don't worry. Uh, an influencer complaining or uh, defending themselves in any way, being mm -hmm. like, no, like I do work hard. It's always going to, I've literally never seen it go well. No, I've never. never seen someone say that. And people are like, actually, yeah. Like everyone's just like, you're stupid. And it just falls on deaf ears because it is, it is a major privilege to make great money and like have okay, your own but schedule. That's where I want to stop you. Let me preface this. D JC, buying a house, great. Like love it. Amazing. Making lots of money. Great. You're like a great influencer. You make, you've like built this career, whatever. I'm not, follow me, follow me. Me and her have been in this the same amount of time. I do not make great money. Like I have made great amounts of money in my career at different times, but like I, for, and maybe I'll get a little vulnerable, vulnerable here. Like maybe I don't want to share all this, but like the last two years, like I've made shit money. Like I've not made a lot of money. Like I've needed to borrow money from my parents. Like what you guys see on social media and you see, like, if you follow me, follow me at Ty French. Like, <laughs> if you see me, like, traveling and going to Aspen and wearing fur coats or whatever, those clothes are loaned from a brand. I did not get to keep any of those. I, I wear this exact same outfit every day. I sometimes have to have my parents help me pay rent. Like, I am working my ass off to try and get my podcast up so that I can get advertisers. Like, I shoot almost every single day trying to get, you know, brand partnerships or whatever. And those brand partnerships are a good amount if I got a brand partner every day, but it's like some, some months I get one brand partner, some months I get four. Mm -hmm. And so it pretty much does even out to, I have a lot of friends of mine that work very like regular, normal jobs in like marketing or like for other companies, like some of my friends work in like healthcare sales or whatever. They're making more than money. They are making more money than me. Mm. Sure. My life looks more glamorous. I'm traveling and sometimes I'm on a private jet to Aspen or I'm doing this or whatever. And I'm head to toe designer clothes. You cannot project and say that, like, I'm out of touch because of what you see on someone's Instagram. Mm -hmm. And that's what frustrates me. Like, the blanket, like, influencers aren't allowed to complain. It's like, okay, because I get to travel the world and, like, I, you know, sometimes get clothes sent to me or PR companies or whatever. Like, doesn't mean that, like, I'm also not struggling financially. And I'm also trying to, you know, get in the hustle and the grind. And I also have to pay $800 for health insurance and all of these things. So I just hate when someone, like, 
diminishes the work that like I do as an influencer mm-hmm. because of the privileges that come with it. It's like, I'm not allowed to complain and I work a nine to five, so it's different. It's like, okay, but I- I'm not in the boat of like an influencer that has a brand that's carried at Revolve and is living in a $5 million house. Right. So influencers are allowed to complain and anyone's allowed to complain about their jobs. I don't know if that made sense. No, it, it does. I, I think, and what you just shared is like, I think the hard part of that is sometimes when you like are vulnerable or you're, you'll share something like that where it's like, you guys, like my life is not perfect. I struggle with A, B, and C. Then people will have more empathy for you. Like even with my infertility stuff, it's like when I'm like, you guys, like my life, I'm doing all these treatments and I like don't like, feel why well. Why do you have to no, share that? Exactly. But it's like, but you also are not, you shouldn't have to share really deep, vulnerable parts of your life for people to like treat you like a human and be like, oh, you probably go through hard things too. Like I, I, I'm, and I'm glad you did share that. I'm just saying, it's like, that does kind of bother me that it's like, we have to be like showing ourselves being very raw and like sad or opening up and saying, you guys, like I've had a really hard this and this, or like, I went through this in my childhood for people to be like, oh, okay. Like you deserve to be an influencer then. It's like, it just, yeah, there's, there's a lot. And I think as human beings, you just, it's not fun to be invalidated in anything you do. So, so whether or not someone sees being an influencer or a podcaster as valuable, cause it just seems like another element to, I, to it, I think is that people think it's just vain. Cause it's like, oh, you mm. take selfies all day. And like, again, from what they see, oh, you went to Aspen on a private jet and you're head to toe designer and you're in Mexico with all your best friends. And then you're like, oh, I've had a hard day. And they're like, well, I've been working as a nurse. And yeah. again, it's not fair, but I think that that's where it comes from is just like when, when, things you see that look so glamorous. It's like, it's, it's even us with celebrities. Like if a celebrity mm. complains a lot, it's like, Oh, I'm sure you have such yeah. a hard life in your million dollar mansion, whatever. Yeah. So that's just what I hate about elements. disclaimers though, because I understand, but I feel like we have gotten so sensitive, like as a collective general society mm-hmm. that like people feel so scared, especially like in the social media space. I don't even think it's just influencers. I think people just in general are scared to like post a meme or, you know, mm-hmm. tweet something or whatever about anything because they're scared they're going to like get canceled or people are going to take it the wrong way. But it's like, you be the person that you want to like see out in the world mm-hmm. because you shouldn't have to give a disclaimer about anything. If someone reads something out of context or doesn't know the whole picture and they decide to interpret that wrong, that is on them. Mm-hmm. It is not my job to give you a full backstory of everything that I'm going through before I complain about something. Yeah. If I complain about something, who are you to come back and be like, oh, well, you just went to Puerto Vallarta with all your best friends and you're in this, 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 and this, like, why are you complaining? It's like, oh, well, you don't know, maybe this. Maybe yeah. someone I know just passed away. Maybe this, this, this. But like, why do I have to give a disclaimer? Mm-hmm. Why do I have to say, guys, I'm really going through a lot right now and whatever. Like, that is just not, I that feel like, a part of the human experience. I was going to say, that should just be understood. That's something that we talk a lot about on the podcast is like, it should be understood you're not getting every ounce of someone's life. Exactly. When, what you're seeing is not 100% everything they went through that day. So like, I feel like non-influencers, social media used to be so different like 10 years ago, five years ago. I feel like all my friends or even like people I'll like try and go on dates with or whatever, I'll see in dating apps, I'll like go over their profile. And it's like the last time they posted was 2022. On their Instagram? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or like they post every six months. So I'm like, you're not posting everything in your life. You're expecting me to? Right. Like, why can't we just post a highlight reel? And also like influencers are only a thing. And we only got to this point because people care, because people are interested and because people want to see it. Like you, people want to consume content Mm -hmm. for entertainment, whether it's photos, whether it's TikTok, whether it's YouTube videos or whatever. And so the entitlement to be entertained by something and then also be angry that that person is being rewarded for the time that they're putting in to entertain you is crazy to me. I I mean, I completely agree. I feel like there's so much... There's so much I wanted to talk to you about too because I was just organizing my photos um, yesterday. There were so many of us I'm scared. that were like printed out just like from disposables, from yeah. like concerts or photo shoots, like our trip to DC. Oh my gosh. Um, me when I came to visit you in Virginia, like photo shoots from Arizona, just all this different stuff. And I really was just like thinking about it in preparation for this episode too. And I was, I wanted to talk to you just about like creativity and creating and because this is, if you guys don't haven't followed along for like literally 10 years, literally. then 
I'm not going to get into our whole, our love story, yeah, but you've probably heard it before if you're an OG Valley girl. Yeah. But like Tyson and I met through photography mm-hmm. and we met through be, for, because of a mutual love of photos and creating and having fun and driving out to the desert and shooting, you know, just f- crazy fun c- concepts. Literally like 5 a.m. Saturday, every high school weekend, we'd be like making flower crowns and going out in the desert. Like, <laughs> Yep. In, literally in a river. Literally. Um, and I was just pondering on that and kind of just thinking about how like it used to feel so much more simple. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, you know, we would create with not a lot of like, sure, we were maybe going to post it on Instagram, but I feel like I was less jaded in general by life. I feel like I was just excited to create. I just thought it was fun. It was innocent. And I was just thinking about how like now it's so much more complicated. I think like we, for so long, I feel like, especially in the creative space, there was so much lack of transparency, especially with like a consumer. Like what I like to compare it to is like an artist, like a painter. Someone can paint a painting. I don't care if it took them two hours 10 years, uh, whatever, what, who painted it, what it's worth. The painter decides what they want to sell it for. They mm-hmm. decide what it's worth. You don't walk into an art gallery and go to the painter and be like, you're so entitled. I can't believe you would charge that much for a painting. Like, who are you? Whatever. It's like, well, this is my art. And like, that's what I think it's worth. And that's what I'm going to sell for. And people buy it. And that's what it is. That's all we're doing as influencers or as creators or anyone in any business. It's like, I... And setting a boundary for myself. What do I want to do for a job? What do I want to work? And that amount of work, what do I feel like is worth it for me to do that mm-hmm. and to sustain that and to sustain a lifestyle that I want to live? And if I can find a clientele that is going to pay for that, why would anyone judge me for that? Why would anyone like look down on me for that? I would hope that everyone feels like they are being compensated for their time. And I understand that that is a privilege and that that's a blessing and that that is, I feel like, where... That's, I hate using the word jealous, but like that's where I feel like a lot of that animosity towards influencers complaining comes from because people don't have that. And people are very unfairly compensated mm-hmm. in workspaces. And I feel like 99.99999% of course. And I understand that. Mm-hmm. But to just tear down someone who's like just trying to do their best as well mm-hmm. makes no sense to me. Go out, like we've got to collectively go after the bigger fish. Like Rocket Money. This is one of my favorite sponsors because it is something that has genuinely improved my life so much. I've been shouting it from the rooftops. I was just in a conversation with my friend the other day and they were saying, I think I might be paying for that subscription. Like, I don't think I canceled that. And I was like, you need Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. First of all, I feel like going through, trying to go through all of your your uh, transactions from your bank or your statements or whatever, it can feel like a very daunting task. And I feel like it's easy to put off. It's also just easy to forget about it altogether. And then you don't even realize that little expenses like subscriptions and things that you've paid for maybe for a free trial or something that you're just simply not using anymore, how that is actually draining your bank account. And Rocket Money just makes it so simple and hassle-free and seamless to cancel those unwanted subscriptions that you're not using anyway and save you money and help you also just be a little bit more aware of where your money is going and potentially budget, all of it. So you can see all of your subscriptions in one place. If you see something you don't want, you can cancel it with a tap. You don't have to get on the phone with customer service, which is one of the best parts of this app. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasted money, negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Think about all that money that you're wasting that you can spend on things that you actually want to spend it on or you can save it. So stop wasting money on things you do not use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash what we said. That's rocketmoney.com slash what we said. Rocketmoney.com slash what we said. Go check it out. I don't know. I, no, I agree completely. But I think, I think the- Because now of, I feel like, it, sorry, let me finish that thought. That's okay. where I was going with that. Back in the day, there's no transparency. And mm-hmm. that's why I feel like you wouldn't go after like artists or photographers or anything. Like a creative person would be like, I'm going to build this statue, 20 grand. Okay, great. Now, 
there's been this thing with social media where we are so much more involved in people's lives and being You're saying a create, that people are more, we're they, way they more know. transparent. So now I feel like people can break down like almost what, what the value per like time that they think that they're perceiving that this person is working for. Does that make sense? Well, you're just saying people are more transparent about like how much influencers make. So it's like, is that how what you're saying? How much they make. And also they're seeing every second of the day. So they think of someone's life. And so uh-huh. they're like, oh, well that's what they're doing all day. And they're making this much money. That doesn't seem worth it to me. Right, you're not right, seeing right. the painter paint the painting. You don't know how long it took. You're not seeing the sculptor do this. You're not seeing- The behind the scenes. The behind the scenes. Yeah. Now you see so much behind the scenes. So you're able to like- calculate like how much they're making per hour or this. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think if you don't have personal experience with, like I would never try and come into someone else's space and be like, mm, you're not, it's not worth that much for you because like I have no experience with that. Right. And I am not by any means trying to say, again, I don't even, I shouldn't give the disclaimer, but it's like, I'm not trying to say podcasting and social media. It's such, it's so hard. Right. But I will say like, Honestly, a lot of people that I know that have started podcasts, they right. have quit because it's like it's hours and hours. Yeah, because of time. it is very time consuming. And if you're not making money, like it doesn't make sense to continue yeah. to put that much time into something. So yeah. like I I do think there's something to be said for like if you are very consistent on social media, like you are putting a lot of time. I, I've seen people be like, um, like influencers say, you know, oh, we hired a nanny. And people are like, why did you hire a nanny? Like you're literally an influencer. And it's like, like what if I had a, any other job? Yeah. You wouldn't question it. Yeah. And I saw this other person, someone said, um, I can't remember what she said, but she was like, yeah, like my fake job that makes like this fake money that like I bought my fake house with. Like, it's like, yeah. it's obviously, I just don't understand at this point. Oh, oh, I remember what it was. Um, someone was saying that Haley Bieber basically doesn't have a job. Like she was, she was oh, like, I just I got home this. from work yeah. and people were like work. Like you think she just like creates and develops these products yeah. and does nothing. It's like, okay, she is running like a massive skincare company. And again, it's like, so is it all just make believe? Like yeah. at what point are we going to acknowledge that it's a job? But that, what you just said there, that's what I want people to accept and realize the girl I'm sure was doing it to be like condescending. Oh, but just my fake job with my fake money for my fake house or whatever. Yeah. It's like, it is fake. Like we built as humans, this system, like right. we are literally in a game of monopoly. And that sounds like conspiracy theory, but it's like not, it's like we built buildings and homes or whatever on a piece of land and built a system of like, okay, now $1 is worth much. this much. And this is worth this much. And a loaf of bread is going to be worth this much. And this random plot of land, we're going to block off and sell it for $200,000 here and a million dollars here. And this is this. We literally just made it up at some point. And like, that's how we are where Life we're works. at now. So why are you now mad at other people for making up a career and being like, okay, like you wouldn't go into a plastic surgeon's office and be like, I don't think a boob job is worth 15 grand. Like it, you're literally sticking two balls of saline <laughs> in my titties and that's worth $30,000. Um, that's a car. But yeah. then other people would be like, oh my gosh, I think that's worth 200 grand. Right. And the doc, but it's like it's the doctor went to school and it's like, what is it worth it for me to mm-hmm. do this? What do I think it's worth? 30 grand. Then you just do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot of layers to all of it. I, I was thinking about the whole creativity thing though, because like I was saying, it used to feel so much more simple. And I was like, Hmm, why doesn't it feel simple anymore? Yeah. Let's go away from the money, please. Yeah. Let's, let's dive into I'm that. Poor, don't judge me. I feel like I'm going to get canceled after this episode, but I just want you guys to know that I'm an influencer and I work really hard and that I want you to listen to my podcast so that I can make even more money because also I do live in a studio apartment. It's very small <laughs> and I do owe my dad some money. Anyways. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I need some advertisers. Uh, anyways, um, um, I'm just kidding. Guys, really though, I, I do want, I don't know. I feel like I can get so heated and it's easy for us to like talk about influencers, whatever. And I am just so, I don't want to give a disclaimer, but it is such a weird thing to talk about. And it is scary because I'm so scared of the internet. Well. But just, I think the main thing I want to say is like, we mean well and uh, I don't even know. I don't even know how to run out. <laughs> don't care. I know. No, my it's, life's not harder than being a doctor. I know that. My life's not harder than being a doctor. <gasps> uh, it's it's everyone's entitled to just feel the way they feel, and I think it's again, it's just like an easy target. But um, I was saying on a kind of a recent episode, even the whole sorry, I don't want to keep harping on that influencer thing. I really want to get into something else. Yeah, we're gonna but, get into some fun um, stuff. Like, I do think because being an influencer is uh, predominantly. Not per, I would say actually it is probably female. predominantly female run space. 
it is much less respected. And I really do believe that that is, it is because it is primarily female. And like, if you say you're an influencer, think about it. It's like, oh, that's cringy, like to be an influencer. And, and we were talking about it on a recent episode. If you say like, I'm a podcaster, it even sounds a little bit more like credible. And I do believe that's because that field has been male dominated. There's for literally a, long time. a term for this. And I saw someone break this down on a TikTok and it made me really upset for women in spaces there's like literally a term for it. I can't remember what it is, obviously, because I'm dumb, but <laughs> like words that are associated with women mm -hmm. that start out normally as something like bitch, a female dog. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say it because I don't know what the Valley girls get <laughs> X-rated, but like the P word. Mm -hmm. It's all like negatively uh, associated. C, the C word, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all these things. It's like, those all are just terms that like, you do not mean anything. And then they now turn into like some of the most degrading things that you can call mm -hmm. someone. And then an influencer started out as all female, pretty much. It's still a female owned space. And like now it's deemed as derogatory because all these women are become powerful and have a lot of money or mm -hmm, whatever. Mm -hmm. What the heck? I know. But it I will also will say, they talk about this on the toast before as well. The difference and I, I'm going to speak very general terms. Men and women. Women tear women down more than anyone else. Mm -hmm. Men do a lot of shocking things to women, for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But like men aren't in the comments or on Reddit pages talking about women mm -hmm. and in a general sense. Yeah. And men aren't really doing that about other men either. Like if I don't like a guy doing other things or like their Instagram page or I don't like their podcast, whatever, I'm not talking crap about them. But like there is this competition between women and I feel like that is, is that's what's different between you as an influencer and me as an influencer. Mm -hmm. And I feel like even just between like our podcasts and like some of like the feedback, like if people don't like my podcast, I feel like they just go away. But I don't know. I feel like some of the things that I've heard, like you tell me that people have like sent you messages about or whatever. It's like, what made you feel inclined to say that? That is yeah. not an appropriate thing to say. Well, and it's always like people would never pit you and I against each other, right. but they would pit like me against my other girlfriends right. or like compare me to my other influencer girlfriends. Like I will get messages where it's yeah. like, she does this more than this person. And it's like, why are you comparing us? Like, whoa, whoa. They would, you would never yeah. compare, even if you, even you and Jose, like maybe some people would make a comment, but they wouldn't be like, Tyson is more this than Jose. Like, because men just you normally don't. And if they, and if someone did that, it would probably be a woman doing that. Yeah. And you don't see like viral TikToks going off of like people breaking down, like men TikTokers who are like going viral and like, you know, trying to get to the bottom of things, but like people just try and pick apart successful women mm -hmm. in general, mm -hmm. like influencers and in other spaces. Like, but I really challenge people to, if you catch yourself like judging a successful woman, like truly sitting with that and trying to get to the bottom of like what that is. Mm -hmm. Did they do anything to you? Like it, what, what is it about what this woman is doing that is upsetting you so much? Yeah. There's, Cause I guarantee there's you it's so nothing there. that the, the woman is doing. Yeah. There's a lot of layers to that. And I, but I think that what you're, what you're describing and the perception thing of like, basically I came to the conclusion when I was pondering about, you know, why did it used to feel so simple? Why did it used to feel so fun? Just like going out and photo shoots and creative and blah, blah, blah. A lot of that is that the older you get, the more responsibilities you have right. and you become an adult and it's like, okay, well now I'm worried about money and this and right. that. And it's like, now I simply don't have as much free space in my mind to be like, yeah. Let me just go out and do this photo shoot. Um, I just feel like there's so much more noise. And especially if you are someone who has a platform, like it becomes less, I don't want to say fun, but it's just like, you know, it, be, it, when we were shooting photos back in the day, it's not that like, oh, we never received like bad feedback, but it's like, there was no feedback to be given. Yes. There was just like, it just wasn't that deep. And yeah. I feel like now it's so much easier to overthink like every aspect of everything because you know that there's going to be a perception of it and then there's Whether going to be a conversation. Yeah, positive or negative and there's going to be a conversation about it. And yeah. so it makes it harder to just like create more freely. Mm -hmm. And I've seen Amber talk about this, our queen. Oh, our queen, all hell Amber. <laughs> we love Take you. a shot every time we mention Amber on this podcast, but she was talking about how people will like, uh, well, okay, Two, this is twofold. I've been reading this book called The Creative Act and it's all about creativity. And he talks about how some of the greatest artists in the world, they're able to preserve their childlike qualities. And that's mm. what makes them great artists is that they're able to 
be curious, be spontaneous, be all these things that we kind of lose when we get into adulthood a lot of times because there's so much noise and because we're so stressed and because there's so much going on that we don't have free time and space to think about things. And we also have um, preconceived notions about things. We are analytical because we, you know, we've learned from past experiences. Okay, I don't want to do that again. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like things are more complicated. And Amber was talking about how a lot of things she shares, like, oh, I'm going to get into painting and like, I'm going to do this and that and people will, or like, I'm going to wear this like floofy dress and people are like, you're so childish. And like, like, why do you act like a kid? And she's like, like, thank you. Yeah. And she's like, that is the greatest compliment because aren't we all trying to be carefree and like kind of be in like a childlike state. There's also a difference between being childish and childlike. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's so important to have time to think. I was also listening to this podcast. Um, it was actually a Skinny Confidential one. She was talking about how Bill Gates, like I think it's Bill Gates, he does a think week every year mm. where he just like basically goes to a cabin and like turns off his phone and literally thinks for oh, a week. I need to do that. I know. And she was saying how her and Michael have uh, implemented something like that into their lives where they do. Kind Unfortunately, of like, there's on yacht. <laughs> yeah, yeah, El yacht in St. Mark's, but um, we will be in our home, yeah, in our yeah, living room. I'll be in the garage of yeah. her home. <laughs> but I was thinking about that because basically the point of it is that as a creative person, and we're all creative, so mm. that basically just means as a person, you need space right. to think. And if you don't have it, it will be very hard to execute on creative ideas and to be carefree and to have any of those childlike qualities because you are too bombarded. Totally. And that was something I was thinking about because I'm like, how can we get back to kind of this like creative flowing state where it's just like, it's not that deep and we're literally just having fun. Totally. And sometimes that feels impossible, but I think maybe one step in the right direction is like, you know, you don't have to go off to a cabin for a week, but even just having like a day, like yeah. I deleted Instagram this weekend just cause I was like, I'm feeling like overstimulated yeah. and it feels good. It's just like having a little bit of space to breathe. Yeah. I've done that multiple times in my life, like where I feel like just overwhelmed and I really want to get back to like my roots as creativity and like not even, I want to be, I feel like we maybe should have said this at the beginning of the episode, but I feel like we keep talking in terms of like creators or influencers or whatever, but That is only the way, that's the way that we're navigating this conversation because like that's the angle that we're looking at it. But like all the things that we're talking about, I feel like are, if you take the words influencer or creator out of it and replace it with other things, like it's a broader conversation that needs to be had. And it sucks coming maybe from an influencer because that's where I feel like people all of a sudden then they turn it off and they disconnect. But it's like, we really just want you to like be the best version of yourself and like get what you're worth and like be the most creative version of yourself not as an influencer. If you want to be an influencer, great. But just like, mm-hmm. I feel like the term as a creative person. and creator, like nowadays leans more like, oh, like you want to be a photographer. You want to be like an influencer or whatever. Uh-huh. It's like, no, like you said, like every person is a creative and you are creative in your own regard, whether it's like journaling or anything. And mm-hmm. like, just fi- like getting, honing into that and like getting out the outside noise of the world and understanding when to like, receive that criticism and like learn and grow from it, but then Mm -hmm. also not let it get to you and hinder yourself. Like you said, like we used to be so much more free and whatever, because we didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's like a balance of learning, you know, you don't want to be untouchable to the outside world and not up for not take anything. Yeah. Critique or criticism. Yeah. Yeah. Other people, whatever, but I don't know. It's just a balance. Of course. And it's like, I think with something like, having your life on the internet or creating photos or whatever it is. It's like, I think that the worst thing that you can do is to let your worth start to be in other people's hands. Mm -hmm. Like you have to find it within yourself to, which I think is something that's transparently like hard for both of us because we know no different than like putting our life or our art out there. And like, I don't mean to make that deeper than it is, but it's like, we, Specifically, you and I have done the photographer route and the self-employed and the Mm -hmm. like having our own business since we were like 16 years old. And so we actually don't know any different than to almost like put our worth into someone else's hands. Like, like, okay, what do you think I'm worth? Like, do you think this picture is cool? Are you going to pay me for what this is worth? And there's pros and cons that come with every type of upbringing, but like specifically for us and being an influencer is like, it depends on your relevance. So it's like, oh, do people now think you've fallen off? And like, well, then you're not going to get paid. And it's like, oh, so I'm not worth enough. Like it is a lot to 
I think it's like an interesting way to grow up. Yeah. And I was talking to someone about this the other day, actually about like parasocial relationships. And I feel like I've, with the podcast and with it growing and stuff, I feel like I've kind of seen a new viewpoint on parasocial relationships because for the longest time, just doing Instagram and photography, I feel like it was all about just image. Like I wasn't really showing my personality or I wasn't really connecting with an audience at all. Mm -hmm. And with social media now, everyone has parasocial relationships, whether you're a creator or not, with celebrities, but it's just so much, you're so much deeper into it because we have so much access to things and TMZ will report something before the family even knows, or, you know, mm -hmm. we just have so much access and you are connected to so many different people that you do not know. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think we've even had a lot of conversations about the parasocial relationship from the viewpoint of like a follower of ours or a listener of ours to us. But now with the podcast and getting close with a lot of my tyrants and in the DMs, I'm realizing I also have a parasocial relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And there is a sort of the same way that someone is dependent on you. You know, they're looking forward to the podcast every Wednesday or Tuesday, or they're mm -hmm. looking forward to this, or like they expect certain things from you without even knowing that they're expecting it. We also get that way. We also expect that. And so when we don't receive that or if we receive it negatively or whatever, that is a really hard space to like be in and to navigate for your mental health and to understand what is the healthy boundary of that? Because mm -hmm. I don't want to be, or you shouldn't want to be a, a person who expects something from someone because you're putting out a product, you're putting out a service, or you're putting out an episode or a whatever. And you're expecting people to receive that. I also need to be expecting. I know exactly the, what you're trying to say. Yeah, it's like, it, it's a give and a take, but the same way that I want you to respect and understand a boundary of like where that stops. I also have to understand that. Mm -hmm. There are people that I DM all the time about the podcast every week or whatever. And like you rely on each other. It's a hard a push and pull. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you can't just expect to take, 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 take from your followers. Oh, listen to my podcast. Give me money. Do all this stuff. Yeah. And then, but I'm not going to give you any information. Like, exactly. but then it's like, but there is also a line, a line. where exactly. I do deserve privacy in certain yeah. ways. I do deserve this and that. I don't, like we had at the beginning, the conversation we had at the beginning, I don't have to tell you every single thing yeah. that's going on in my life for you to give me, to treat me like a human being as well. Yeah. It is like a give and take. It's really, really interesting. Yeah. And I think I want, I, I think that goes for every part. Like when you, when you told me that this is kind of what we were going to be talking about, my main takeaway, like the main thing that I wanted to evoke in this episode or that I wanted to like, the point that I wanted to get across, the mm -hmm. only thing I could really think about was like, and it's so Cheesy, cheesy, hot take, cheese ball. Like, be the person, get the Pinterest quotes ready, ladies. Be the person that you want to be or that mm -hmm. you want to see in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, if you are trying to be an influencer and you are putting out all this amazing content and you're curious, like, why no one's engaging, why no one cares, when was the last time you commented on someone's photo? Like, do you constantly, or do you follow people and are you a ghost follower? Or are you constantly going through your feed and hyping up your friends and hyping up people that you don't know but you follow? Are you hyping up the other creators? When you see they do an ad, are you hyping them up? Because then when you post an ad and you're curious why it's getting low engagement, do you engage with other people's ads? Right. And that, once again, I'm viewing it as the as an influencer, that's my perception of it. But that can be with so many things. Like if just you supporting people and like what they're doing, your friends aren't, you know, being there for you and helping you. And, you know, maybe you just moved apartments or something and you feel like no one showed up for you. When was the last time you showed up for that friend? Mm -hmm. Like, it's just constantly being aware of like the give and take in the creative space, in the workspace, in friendships and everything. And when that is not balanced, that is where the anger, animosity, jealousy, disconnect, disconnect begins. Uh-huh. No, I, I couldn't agree more. I feel like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta be the change you want to see in the world. Be the change you want to see in the world. Um, let me see if there, well, I wanted to talk about this a little bit, but I, I think we've chatted about it a little. There is this quote that literally like when I saw it, I was like, wait, I think I sent it to you because we talked about it briefly when Maybe. we were FaceTiming a while ago, but it basically says people hate their own art because it looks like they made it. They think if they get better, it will stop looking like they made it. Did we talk about this? No, but I'm gonna need to unpack that real quick. Okay, say it again. Sorry, I'm like kind of going on a different. Turn it up, ladies. Turn um, up the volume. Basically, it's talking about the concept of of when you are creating any type of art. So whether that again, that can mean anything you want that to mean. Mm -hmm. Like we're just coming from the angle of like being a photographer or creating like imagery, whatever. Um, 
basically it was saying how like for a lot of artists or people, their art is never good enough for them because it just looks like they made it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. sometimes, sometimes when I'll take photos, like even on my baby moon recently, I was like kind of trying to, I was like, oh, I want to document this. Mm-hmm. And my favorite clips, like even I was, we were taking some clips for the vlog, just like on iPhone. And my favorite clips were the ones Leif took because I'm like, yeah. you have like, that was the vibe. Right. And the ones I took, it's like, oh yeah, well, it looks like I took it. Like, because I can't, you can't get outside of your own right. head. Right. And it was just basically saying there's like this constant quest for like, You think that if you get better, like, oh, if I get better at photography, it will stop looking like I made it. It will look like a real photographer did it. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, no, for sure. I think it's, I'm in my Pinterest quote era, but I feel like it kind of goes to the quote of like, comparison is the thief of joy. Oh, not the Mormon coming out on me. (laughs) Welcome to primary class. Sunbeams, here we go. Comparison is the thief of joy. And like you, the, the biggest thief, the biggest felon, in that case, is yourself. If mm-hmm. you are comparing yourself to yourself and to others, like you are going to be miserable and you're never going to be satisfied with your work, especially mm-hmm. in a creative field. I remember like back early days, photography, shooting weddings and whatever, I was always, you know, waiting for the better, and I don't want this to sound rude towards like any of my brides, but like the better bride, like the better wedding venue, the bigger budget with the mm-hmm. flowers or whatever, mm-hmm. not even so that I would make more money, just so that I had better things to take photos of. Uh-huh. And I look back on my old wedding photography and I'm like, hmm, it's cuter than my photography now. Yeah, yeah. Like I was so hard on myself comparing myself to all these other wedding photographers that were shooting weddings in Spain. Meanwhile, I was shooting them in Gilbert, Arizona or, you know, all of these different comparisons. And you look back at yourself and this this just comes with age, Valley Girls. So if you're young listening to this, don't worry. You, it will get better. Mm -hmm. You look back on the things that you stressed about when you were a teenager or a young adult and you're just like, I want to punch you in the face, mm-hmm. you dumb idiot. Like, you are killing it. Like, you look back at your younger self and you're just like, I'm so proud of you. Like, us getting up at 5 a.m., doing photo shoots just for the fun of it, not knowing where it's going to lead, and then, like, look where it led to us. Like, mm-hmm. it's so fun. And mm, you can catch me dead doing that now. I'm not waking up at 5 o'clock to, shoot a photo, <laughs> to do a photo shoot and go to Trader Joe's and make a flower crown. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hire someone to do it. And that photo shoot See, is going to be at 11 a.m. in the morning. See, but that's what we need to get back to. Is I know. We need to get back to our roots of like trying hard because we totally. just want to and because it's just fun and because we don't care about the perception and because it doesn't matter. And like, But I was thinking a lot about that quote because I'm like, for me, and I do feel, I don't want to like project onto you, but I, I feel project. like both of us are are perfectionists in this way where even when Tyson said he wants to reshoot his cover that we just shot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, no, well, you're shooting it, so. <laughs> yeah, that's, the, that's, <laughs> that's why the I issue. said we're not reshooting. <laughs> um, no, it's because I feel like there's that sentiment there almost of like, but I feel the same way about my own stuff. It's yeah. like, I do something and I'm like, okay, that was cute for like a week. And then I'm like, well, what's yeah. next? What's better? And I feel like the outside person looking at your cover is like, mm-hmm. that is literally the most iconic thing I've ever seen. Yeah. And that's how I feel about it. I'm like, oh, oh my gosh. gosh, like the fact, this outfit that you put together, like everything about it is so amazing. But I feel like sometimes that's hard for the person who created it or had the vision yeah. to understand like just how cool it was. And I feel like you'll look back at that, right. that cover photo in three years and you'll be like, wait, yeah. That was amazing. And you'll almost like it better than maybe your current <laughs> That's one. how I am about the Ty Fridge podcast cover. <laughs> I look back and I'm like, that was so creative doing my driver's license. That That's was so what cool. I told you. <laughs> I know, but I rebranded. I'm oh sorry. my gosh. And I love the rebrand. I do. I think the rebrand was the move. But at the time when you're I, like, eh, like yeah. that cover, I'm like, what do you mean? That's the coolest cover that I know I've what you seen. Mean. It's, a, it's a perfect balance of just. Something that I learned a few years ago when getting some blood work done is that a lot of people and most women are deficient in vitamin D. So they are not getting enough vitamin D from their diet. In fact, 97% of women ages 19 to 50 are not getting enough vitamin D from their diet. So Rituals Essential for Women 18 Plus was shown to increase vitamin D levels by 43% in a clinical study. If you guys have been listening to the podcast for a while now, you will know that Ritual is one of our OG sponsors. We love them so much. Their multivitamins are clinically backed for women 18 plus with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. I feel like adding a multivitamin into your morning routine or whenever you want to take it is a really simple way to kind of elevate your health and wellness and make you feel more put together and just potentially fill those gaps in your diet because we all have them. 
I also love Ritual so much because it's gentle on an empty stomach and it has like a minty aftertaste. It's a little minty essence in every bottle that actually makes it enjoyable to take your multivitamins. I hate a chalky vitamin. I hate one that tastes like fish. You guys know the vibes and it's not, it's just not it. So Ritual just makes it very simple. Ritual's Essential for Women is USP verified so you know you can trust what you're putting in your body. Only about 1% of supplement brands on the market have the USP verified mark, which shows that the product contains the ingredients actually listed on the label. Ritual vitamins are vegan, non-GMO, project verified, gluten and major allergen free, certified B Corp, and made traceable. So no more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 25% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash what we said. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 plus to your subscription today. That is ritual.com slash what we said for 25% off. Once again, coming from a creator standpoint, but just in a wider scale, there's a balance that we need to find within ourselves as human beings of striving for perfection, but also always striving to grow. Mm -hmm. Like you should always be excited to grow and improve and to further your bounds and your limits but without the expectation of seeking perfection. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's where sometimes I get tripped off. I feel like I'm constantly seeking perfection or thinking that, oh, if I just do this one more thing, then I'll love it. Then I'll be satisfied. Mm -hmm. But that mindset is not healthy. I need to realize that like, it's okay to want to grow and to be able to, you know, evolve. But the constant telling myself that, oh, but if I do this, then I'll be happy with it. It's like, that's just not the case. You're never going to be happy with it. There's no end goal. Mm-mm. I was actually just talking to um, Jack Junk, our friend mm-hmm. at the Tesla Gallery this last weekend. And we were talking about this. When you're younger and I hate when a bitch comes on and is like, oh, you young kids, like, you know, when I was 21, whatever. I get it. I'm 27. I'm young, but also I'm feeling old. My back hurts and uh, I 30, have a receding hairline. I'm almost <laughs> 30. But literally when you're younger- there's this competition and underlying insecurity, just not even between other people or yourself, just like the world. Like you are just thrown into this thing. And the older you get, you realize like, there is no end goal. Mm-hmm. There is no end point. There's no and final faking destination. It as well. Everyone's faking it. Everyone's or growing. like everyone's just like they're, trying their best, and it's yeah. they don't know what they're doing either. Yeah, there's even no the competition. You look up like you shouldn't be insecure over like what other people are doing or how far they are in their journey or if their this looks better than yours or whatever. It's like, they probably think the same about you. Mm -hmm. And the older you get, you just realize like, I think the older that I've gotten, I feel like my life has become a lot more collaborative. Mm -hmm. Like instead of having, I don't think we've ever had like jealousy or like comparison or whatever. I think that is a benefit of like not being both girls. Yeah. Um, And like kind of having our own space. But I am much more excited and open to being like collaborative in like many things, conversations, parties, events, like outfits. Like I'm much more open to like an outside opinion because I realize like that doesn't diminish my opinion or my creativity Mm -hmm. or my thoughts or anything, you know, like you can only build from that. Yeah. And we're like more powerful together as as humans, just in general, like that is how, yeah. I mean, again, I guess coming from like the creator space, it's like, that's how people grow the most is Mm -hmm. like, collaborating with other people because we're all, we all make each other more powerful. And that's why it is so important to like be supportive of other people, no matter who they are, because it's just going to bring that energy right back to you. And you're going to feel so much more inspired and excited to create in in whatever capacity. Totally. Um, I feel the most excited about stuff. Like the more I help other people, like the more I'm focused on myself and my own self growth, I feel like is when I'm doing the least self growth. Like when I'm also managing my growth, but Mm -hmm. like making sure I'm spending time like with my crew core people, like not only just hanging out, like helping them, making sure that they're doing great in their projects and their endeavors. That is when I feel the most inspired Mm -hmm. because I'm seeing how they're doing things and I may be seeing them do it in a different way or I'm doing it in a different light. And then I maybe had this idea that I couldn't quite finish the circle. And then I, you know, helped out the Tesla gallery and then that finished the loop or, you know, Mm -hmm. 100%. 100%. It's like what people say, like, get outside yourself. It, yeah. It's That's when you're going to feel the most in your head and overthinking and, like, is when you're being self-centered. Yeah. Like, there's one thing to care about yourself and, and you know, try your hardest at everything, but there's another. And, and again, I think that's a fine line, especially if you do, 
live your life and you share a lot on the internet and you have these outside perceptions, it's it's much easier to fall into um, being more self-centered because mm -hmm. you almost can't help it because you get so much feedback that yeah. it makes you overthink and yeah. you just go into this loop of like caring so much about yourself. Yeah. And I agree. It's like the times when I'm the most happy is when I am like not even concerned about the perception or anything right. of me. And I'm just like having fun with someone else. It's like, I'm so, I'm actually very happy and fulfilled yeah. when I'm not thinking about myself all the time. Yeah. And it just like breeds inspiration. Yeah, for sure. There's so many, oh my gosh. Uh, my whole list, I didn't, we didn't talk about anyway. No, <laughs> I know. I wrote some stuff down too. Is there any like bullet points you want to buy? My third one is unfollowing people isn't rude. That's one of my hot takes. That's for one of your media. hot takes. Like oh, if someone not. is making you feel insecure about like, if, if you really feel like an influencer is pissing you off because they like are chopping the world or whatever, yeah, that's making you feel them. bad, unfollow them. Guess what? I've had to unfollow some people that have six packs lately because guess what? Jack in the crack <laughs> has been my best friend. I've had a little too many pizza huts and I don't like seeing the six abs. On my feed every day. <laughs> they will get followed again when I use that gold gym membership. <laughs> Until then, hustle away, muchacho. But yeah. I feel like That's there's facts. just such a thing. Like, if you... Mute them at the very least. No. no. Have some balls, unfollow them. Okay. Unless it's me. Don't unfollow me. <laughs> no, but like... We if, both our followers just drop. <laughs> literally. Like, hey, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> working at Kmart. <laughs> um, if you... Wouldn't like there are people that like I've met out at bars or whatever that like I like hung out with in passing here or there, like literally three years ago. That now, if I see them at the bar, we will not say hi to each other. Like we don't talk, yeah. nothing. And so I'm like, why am I still following? You? I know. It is actually weird how I saw this video of it's like me like getting the courage. It's like this girl like shaking her finger. It's <laughs> like me getting the courage to unfollow the girl I met four years ago in a bathroom. In a bathroom. Like it's so funny how we just like hold on. It's like, oh, I feel bad. But that's why I was saying mew. I mean, I agree. Like you can yeah, unfollow you can if you mute. Want. I just think like that was a joke, obviously. Like you can mute if you want. I just think we're so conscious of like who we surround ourselves with in reality. And we're not aware of the fact that like, hmm, it's scary guys, check your screen time today. You're spending more time in this version of reality mm -hmm. than you are in this version of reality. Mm -hmm. You are chatting with your friends more in this version of reality than in this version. Like yeah. I, me and you talk way more over the phone and over, you know? Yeah. And it's scary, if honestly. you have negative influences in that version of your reality, in the social media world and in the whatever, that is going to have a negative effect of you in this reality. It will have a huge effect on you. I feel like that's, a, you know, they say like, you're the sum of the people you're around, but it's like, it's also the content that you're consuming. If, exactly. Because a lot of times for me, it's like, I will literally listen to multiple podcasts and it's like, when I add it up, it's like, well, I've been doing tasks all day. It's like five hours of listening to, you know, who, whoever on a podcast. It's like, that's more time than I'm spending with yeah. my best friends yeah. at that, that point. So you want to be very conscious of who you are totally. listening to. Um, and the Valley Girls and the Tyrants are just filling their time with just only education and great vibes, I, good vibes over here. We never talk crap. We never fill your never, head with negativity never, or never, bad never. vibes. Um, my hot takes were that men shouldn't be on social media. What about the homosexuals? Only the girls and the gays, obviously. And the non-binary community. We love our trans sisters and brethren. Um, and the non-binary, the they thems. I, I sound yeah. like Rihanna trying not to get canceled. <laughs> and uh, like one of all um, gender appropriations <laughs> are acceptable, except for... Oh, I don't know the terms. I'm such a bad gay. Cis white men. You're you got it. Cis straight white men. You gotta go. Yeah. I Cis feel, heterosexual white men. Bye. 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 Other than Leif, like you can still dance on take. TikTok. That's not even a hot take. Like everyone thinks that, right? Yeah. Like, Except for Leif. He can dance. Yeah, yeah. He's fine. Leif's dances are one of the only exceptions. Um Okay, well, here was like oh, I don't know if I want to get into this because I feel uh, like get into it. Guess okay. what? I'm here all day. Okay, but we we gotta wrap it up after this one. Ah, come on, I'm bored. Just don't use this is my hot take is don't use other people's social channels as a template for your own. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I was thinking a lot about this because um, I feel like once something, okay. Uh, she's told me this a thousand times. I already know what she's about to say. What? That if something is working for someone else, you should do the opposite. That too. Oh, uh, yeah. never well, mind. I'm like, I thought we shared a brain. No, no, no. We do. That was that was coming next. Oh, okay, okay. I was going to give a specific example of like, you know, someone who's been popping off recently is Nara Smith, Lucky's mm -hmm, wife. Mm -hmm. Um. And have you seen her videos? Yeah. Like her- Chad wife. Uh-huh. Peanut, peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter um, jelly. And now I've been seeing other girls on my For You page, like essentially just taking that as a template and doing the exact same right. format of, of content down to the like, this morning my kids were craving Cocoa Pebbles. So I decided to, and, and they like do exactly what she's doing. And it, it like, honestly is kind of, 
I guess it kind of is working like they're getting views on it. I feel like a better comparison, not to cut you off, is, and maybe not better, sorry. I'm like, actually, the better thing that you should say, mm -hmm. no, Alex Earl. Like, the whole, she started like, get ready with me. It's like, she made mm -hmm, that popular. Mm -hmm. Now, if I see a video start with, get ready with me. Yeah, yeah, ah, yeah, scroll. Scroll, next, see ya. Me but doing if that it's though. her, I'll still do it. Like, it yeah, just yeah. worked because it was her. I know. I think, I think that just in general, taking someone's, and I'm not saying you can't get inspiration and, the reason I hesitate even to talk, I was like, I don't want to get into it is because then I feel like people expect to go to my TikTok and see the most groundbreaking thing they've ever no, seen and yeah. they're not going to find anything It's not about that. It's about like, you can still, trust me, I do get ready with me. It's like, right. you can do if your you kids want to do this. You can inspo, but don't take someone's exact formula, formula and try and apply it to you and be like, now expect this is, yeah, result. like I'm going to do this and also be, it's like, no, no, no. That's that makes sense because it's very authentic to her. Mm. That's why we like her because it's just not sustainable. That's exhausting no, to try and it is. be someone to produce content that like that just doesn't come naturally to you. Trust me, I've I've done it. Yeah. I've done many phases, and I'm sure you have as mm -hmm. well through our 12 years being on Instagram. I've tried to be like the other peeps. I've tried to, you know, I wanted to work with certain brands and I saw what creators these brands were working with, and I tried to copy the template of the type of content that that was doing, and it just never landed. If anything, I lost followers mm -hmm. and I lost mm -hmm a huge demographic because I was trying to be something that just like wasn't my vibe and it's not my thing. Yeah. And it's very hard to upkeep. I think, Extremely. I think the hard thing with that is like, if that's easy to do when you are at a loss for what you do want to do. Mm -hmm. And if but you that's don't why you know do what your vibe week. is. Yeah. Think week. That's why you got to have space to be creative, to mm -hmm. think about something that you want to do. Like even um, for my gender reveal, I was like trying to think of something that like I hadn't seen just a million you times. You didn't want to book an airplane and have it blow smoke. <laughs> and have people literally the forest catch on fire. Um, no, it just, but that was an example of like, me just kind of like sitting, not that that's that deep. And I'm like, I'm like, I went away to a cabin. <laughs> I went away for a week and I came up with a reel where I wore a pink dress and a blue dress. And then as I was pondering in the morning with my latte, I decided to go back and forth between the two outfits very quick until it landed on the gender which is a woman. Groundbreaking, a woman. Groundbreaking. A woman is in my womb. A woman. Um, again, it's like, I don't like to, because then it sounds like I'm like, no, but my the, genius idea, but I'm again, just saying. We don't gotta give you a disclaimer. You use that example in the form of the context of the conversation. Obviously, we don't think that's the most groundbreaking thing. We're just using that as a sliver of an example of a bigger conversation. If you don't because get that, bye bye. My point is, it's very hard to even come up with something creative because, or like different than what you've seen because the everything's internet, been it, everything's been done. Yeah. So actually, I'm sure that what I did, I'm sure actually someone else right. has done that. You could probably find it. I don't know. I hadn't seen it. But my point is, it's like, just, it is important to like take a beat, to like take space to think about your own life, your own vibe, your own thing. Like, what do I want to do? I don't want to follow exactly a template, even of like, the wellness girlies that's like, okay, I need to get up and like drink lemon water and then mm. I need to go on a walk and then I need to do it. It's like, no, 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 just do what works for you. Like Try to be inspired, not copy. Yeah. When you find something that you might want to do or you might want to rep replicate, figure out how that works best in your life and how you can change it to make it a little bit different mm -hmm. and unique to you. Mm -hmm. And not even for the sake of like, cause then you're copying people just for your own yeah. life to run smoothly. Like you need to do things that- Sustainability. Yes, sustainable. You need to do things that work for you. And- yeah. My personal anyway. trainer always told me that. My friend Ash, who's been on the podcast before, I would always be like, hmm, not right now. Don't take his advice now. But <laughs> when I was in my gym era, he gave good advice. He was just like, because I'd be so, I'd be like, give me your, whatever your diet is and whatever your workout routine is, give it to me and I'm just going to copy that because you look great. And mm -hmm. he'd be like, you're never going to follow that. I yeah. eat way too much food than you're, you're not going to eat that. You're not going to make that food. You're not going to prepare. And I work out for four hours every day. You're not going to do that. So, we have to figure out what you are actually going to commit to, mm -hmm. not even commit to, what you can physically and what you, do and what you, and what you want, want to, to do. do. Exactly. And that's why I got out of my gym phase in the first place is because I was way overexerting myself and doing way too much. And then I just got overburnt and I just stopped going altogether. And now look where that got me. So you <laughs> have to figure out things that are sustainable for you to do if you want it in your routine. I always think about that because I am so inspired by people who are just like gym girlies. And like, I have friends where I'm like, I need to be like you because you're in such good shape and like you're so disciplined. But then when I really stop to think about it, I'm like, do I want to work out two hours a day? I'm like, I actually don't think nope. I even desire that. Like I, it's like you have to figure out your own 
just, yeah, your own schedule, your own thing that works for you in every capacity of life, whether that's like your routines, what mm. you're creating, any of it. Um, I have a lot more, but we're actually recording another episode. Yeah. That's and it's going to be an advice segment. So if you didn't, if you didn't learn from these <laughs> lessons in this episode, come back on Friday. Tune back Next in. Friday, two Fridays. Yes. So we're going to, we're going to end this episode just because it's getting long, but, um, I love you so much. I love you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank I you, love, Valley Girls. I love you. I love yapping and ranting with you. Listen to Tyrants. Yeah. Go listen to Tyrants for some more rants. You've been actually a bit unhinged in your episodes lately and I love it. I won't lie. I feel like my last few episodes have been pretty damn funny. <laughs> they have been hilarious. Like I am genuinely cackling. Oh my gosh, thank you. And like my cheeks will kind of hurt. I'm like, wow, I am like really smiling and laughing. Life will literally, I'll be doing something. He's like, why are you smiling? Like I'm like cleaning the house with headphones and I'm like, oh, oh I'm gosh. just listening to Tyrants. Thank you. So I love you. You gotta, you gotta tune in, Valley Girls. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you want to watch on YouTube, should have said this at the beginning, you can Tune in, What We Said podcast. Um, go listen to Ty Rants, available everywhere you get your podcast. Maybe not YouTube because he's not in his filming era. At the Sometimes moment. when I don't feel ugly, I record. <laughs> we love you guys so, so much. And that's, that's what, what we, we said. said. Bye. We love you, Chelsea.